Typography in UI, UX environments, and also multi script and web typography. You can see those videos in also under under videos on the left in that in that also where the, uh, the discussion is. So go ahead and um, when you ever have a free time, a free minute, have a look and view those videos. So today we'll continue our journey uh, with um, kind of discussing collaboration and type making and also learning about tools uh, in this process and also um, have a bit of view on computational design for typography by uh, Kyuha Shim. You've seen his video already and uh, he'll be sharing a bit on some background on his work in, the, in that field. So stick around. As always, we've invited some really great speakers. And this time people who are more into the technical side of the type business, but of course uh, who as well have uh, a feeling for the aesthetics, for the visual, for, for, the, for the beauty of, of shapes. And first I'd like to welcome Natalia Cadre. Hello, hello, hello Natalia, very happy to have you with us. Nice to be here. <laughs> Great. Um, Natalia is a graphic and type designer originally from Greece, from Athens, but uh, you had um, the, the joy, the pleasure, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, uh, the background of be of a bilingual upbringing. In a way, your father's from Jordan, so um, you told me you do speak some Arabic. <laughs> yes, and, um, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> so, and you, uh, Natalia, holds an MA in Type Design, University of Reading. Uh, and back in 2017, joined the Dalton Mark team uh, as a font developer. And actually, she's one of the few women uh, who is kind of focusing on the more font engineering and including hinting, I, I heard. Um, uh, I'll have a question about that later on. So kudos to you. Yeah, we need more women who know about font engineering. And uh, you have worked so far on various multi-script projects, including uh, Latin, Greek, Cyrillic, and of course some Arabic. And today you will, you'll share some insights on the kind of production workflow at Dalton Mark and the way GitHub is involved in your workflow. So thank you for that. And we'll play uh, your video now. Okay. And we'll speak later on. Shall I mute my, yes, I'll mute. Yes. Okay. See you later. Hello, I'm Natalia. I'm a phone developer at Dalton Mac, and today I'm going to talk about how using Git can benefit the process of making fonts uh, when working collaboratively. More specifically, I'm going to talk about how uh, a Git and a UFO-based workflow can help uh, with questions of uh, archiving and documentation, how it can facilitate collaboration among teams and designers, and how it helps to actually create and build the fonts. I, I'm going to do so by sharing Dalton Max font development process. And uh, overall, I hope to open a discussion on ways of working and tools that we use within the industry. Uh, a small introduction to the terms that we will be discussing. Uh, Git is a version control system, which is a way to manage changes in documents. Um, and it was, uh, it was created and it's widely used by software developers. On the other hand, uh, UFO stands for a unified font object and it's a font file format. A small disclaimer that this talk is not a very in-depth presentation of what a version control system is or where they come from or how UFOs are structured. It's more of an overview of the benefits that we have seen when including them in our workflow at Dalton Mike. So to start with, I think it's good to provide a bit of context about the company in order to help understand what needs this process addresses. Um, Dalton Mike is a typeface design studio. Uh, we work on a variety of projects uh, of uh, 
type related projects of different sizes from uh, logo modification logo refinements and modifications uh, a library project and custom work um, often uh, uh, large in scale and uh, complexity uh, the company is based in London. Uh, there's also an office in Sao Paulo, uh, but uh, we're all we're um, spread in various locations since we've started working remotely. Delta Max team is about 50 people, and a bit more than half of whom form the font development team, which is essentially the font production team. We use the font the term font developer instead of type designer and font engineer, as uh, we don't only work on the design stages, we also get the chance to work uh, on hinting and engineering. So one can um, lead project be part of design drafts and concepts, but also um, uh, hint and engineer. And basically the idea is to be able to pick up a project uh, and to be able to handle a project at any stage. Delta Mag was founded in the early 90s and uh, up to today because uh, of the various changes that uh, have happened uh, both uh, internally and in the market, uh, there was always a need to refine and adapt uh, the processes. Uh, a need for well-documented sources uh, was always a thing uh, to be able to retrieve and work on old files in case a client would come back or um, uh, for the extension of a family. Uh, and there has been always a need for uh, to facilitate collaboration amongst developers and the teams. Um, as the team was expanding and because of uh, the technology, technological changes, uh, there's, there has been a growing need to become software agnostic as well. So this current workflow addresses th these needs quite well. Introducing it to designers, though, it's uh, not always very straightforward. Um, Dalton Mark's previous process involved FontLab 5 uh, for the design, and then uh, we would move to Vault to do the engineering. And all this would require a lot of manual work, and it wasn't super flexible. So around, the, around 2016, the company uh, moved uh, from that workflow to using UFOs and Adobe Feature Syntax and font, font tools to build the fonts. Uh, while using it uh, at that point uh, was mainly for archiving and keeping track of the releases. Uh, when I joined uh, in 2017, uh, we we're going through a bit of a transitional period because uh, we gradually started was working uh, using Git also for the design stages. Uh, this transition was met with a bit of a hesitation. Um, I think uh, Git is becoming more and more widespread in the type design industry but uh, designers are often a bit reluctant to adapt it in their workflows um, as it looks uh, complex or intimidating sometimes. Um, I could summarize maybe the, these, the reasons for this uh, in two points. Uh, one needs to be able to uh, be comfortable in looking at fonts at, as code uh, and not only as the graphic output of their outlines. And uh, secondly, uh, Git uses concepts that uh, are sometimes feel vague or arbitrary and uh, that we're not familiar with if you haven't, you know, if you've never used them before. So for this one, it's just a matter of time and a bit of practice, as is always the case when learning a new tool or a new language. But for the first point, I would argue that um, acknowledging the code nature of fonts allows you to better understand your product, which essentially allows you to have more control uh, in order to provide support and uh, deal with projects. The UFO format is a very good way to understand this. And at least for me, Git worked uh, as a really good training tool uh, to visualize and to better grasp uh, this aspect of my design sources. Obviously, the aim is not to be an expert engineer and working with Git should not be confused uh, with engineering anyway. Uh, but the point is to know enough in order to make uh, use of your product's potential and to be able to work and experiment and try uh, the tools that exist. So um, in order to set up a process, it's important to have clear goals uh, that, ad that address your needs. Uh, for Dalton Mag, it is important to make sure uh, that we're delivering and we're meeting uh, our project's needs. Uh, 
that we make uh, the best use of our resources and uh, also to ensure some flexibility because uh, yes the deadlines uh, so might be tight but uh, or demanding um, but also life can be pretty unpredictable so these are important uh, and as mentioned before uh, uh, fonts have a long lifespan so in uh, the ability to maintain consistency of uh, uh, the quality that we are delivering uh, is always uh, it's also of uh, high priority so there are a few practices in place in order to achieve these um Everybody who joins the team goes through the training pro, uh, process, which is a 10-week program, uh, where we get training on all the stages of our process. This allows everybody to be aligned when they start and before they pick, uh, and to be able to pick up a client project more confidently and join the team that way. Um, we have uh, we keep documentation of our processes and the tools that we use, uh, and we have uh, this monthly phone developer meetings uh, where we have the opportunity to question and uh, raise the issues that we find during the process in order to refine them. Ever since we started using Git, there's been a lot of improvement in achieving these goals and uh, let's talk about more how Git really helps. So in terms of archiving and documentation, we use to manually save sources on server uh, on a server in folders. Um, using version control means that you don't duplicate the entire file. You git records and saves only the changes that are made to a file. Uh, and this one file is updated each time. Uh, this is fast and lightweight, and it really allows you to be as detailed as you want uh, when backing up your work and doing that very efficiently because all the changes are in one place with the push of a button essentially. Uh, if you work with, uh, if you use a Git manager uh, tool, um, which is uh, an app that provides you a, a remote repository, a cloud, uh, uh, you it's also safer because you don't store your stuff only on your local machine. What's more, every time that you commit, every time you, that you save your changes, re Git requires a message. Um, Git keeps track of uh, which clips have been changed or which part of the feature text file has been modified. So that together with uh, this little description uh, creates a very clear project history, which is easy to navigate. Uh, it's uh, super easy to track the changes and keeps good records of a project's development and uh, the decisions. It's uh, pretty good to uh, expand on your explanation in these messages and not just explain uh, what has changed, but also why. Uh, and this uh, adds to have a good uh, record. So if uh, somebody is new to the project uh, or picks it up years after it's been completed, they would know why some decisions were made. We make uh, use of Git tags as well in order to mark the source files when uh, they're on an important stage of the development, so such as reviews and uh, releases. This uh, is good because um, it, you can clearly see what has been done and which stages are completed and what decisions were made and have a good overview of the overall status of the project. And all this documentation is staying attached to the project. Um, obviously, one of the biggest Git benefits is uh, the facilitation of uh, parallel streams of work. Uh, why is it good to uh, work in parallel? Um, from a practical perspective, splitting work allows us to be efficient with deadlines if that's needed. Uh, from a more personal perspective, thinking about people's growth, uh, collaboration and discussion and sharing knowledge is obviously invaluable. And so we, we were splitting work before, but one had to go into the files, copy paste the sources, it, uh, communicate with uh, the other designers for practical issues. This was time consuming and it could lead to mistakes. So uh, now we take uh, advantage of the Git branches, which a branch is basically a work stream. And Git allows to have multiple streams of work uh, that would start from the same point, uh, then you work on your own, and then you merge back together. And that's all done with really minimal effort. So how do we split projects? Um, it's quite easy to split the project per style. Uh, somebody would pick up the italic, somebody would pick up the condensed or the upright uh, or the extended. Um, but that's not really taking full advantage of the tools that we're discussing today. 
Git was made originally for software source code, which is text, and software developers look at it and think about it as text. But fonts, however, are also graphic in nature. So how does uh, Git uh, still help in that context? Uh, this is why we use UFOs, and this is where really the UFO format shines for this workflow. UFO represents font data as text, which Git can handle. Uh, the UFO addresses a need to work collaboratively and to keep good records quite well. Uh, ben Kiel had a very nice presentation at Etai Pai type uh, tech talks uh, uh, about a month ago, uh, where he thoroughly talked about uh, the format and in what ways uh, it can benefit a focus on the design sources. Why it works well with Git? UFO puts information about each glyph in a small file, which is also very Git friendly, as opposed to uh, formats that put the whole font in one single text file. So all sources are in separate files, uh, that including the glyphs, and all this is uh, 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 read, uh, Git can read. In an ideal world, uh, Git would know what a font really is and could uh, show you visually that uh, this person moved uh, that control point uh, to the left and not uh, show you show it only by uh, changes in coordinates. Uh, but being able to look at text differences in UFO files is as good maybe as it gets for now uh, if you want to work uh, across platform and cross applications. But honestly, that's already pretty good because this allows us to split work um, very easily. We just need to be to define beforehand what it's each person will be working on, uh, on which files or which part of the files. And because of uh, the UFO structure, uh, Git and because Git saves only the lines of the text files that were modified, it means that if people are working uh, on different parts of the same file, we are still able to merge without any conflict. It is important to know your code and essentially to know uh, the UFO file structure, what UFOs are made for, what each file contains, and how and if they relate these files relate to each other. So, for example, if you want to only commit the addition of some glyphs files, so you only want to commit the A, you need to remember to also adapt the contents plist file. Knowing your files allows you to avoid conflicts, and it allows you uh, to know how to solve them just in case uh, the conflicts happen, and uh, to take full advantage of uh, the format's potential. It's important to have a, a branching strategy in order to keep a, a clean repository, but especially uh, to create a common language uh, uh, for everybody who's working among you know, across all the phone developers, but also across the projects. So one can pick up work easily, um, even if uh, they pick up a task uh, briefly, and they would know the status of the project at a glance, uh, who's working on what, and uh, how to proceed. Uh, our branching strategy is quite common for software developers. Uh, we have one main branch, uh, that we use for only for the releases. We have a dev branch, which is uh, the common development branch, and um, uh, uh, where you can have the latest stage of uh, the work in progress. And we also have uh, uh, dev topics, depending on the work stream, uh, for dev kerning, engineering, or basically, yeah, it depends on the topic. Uh, and if more than one person works on a work stream, uh, we separate that with uh, our initials. No matter of the strategy that you're using, uh, merging as often as possible is important because it allows you to have uh, updated files and cross-reference the work. It uh, allows you to have uh, to avoid conflicts because uh, there are fewer changes uh, to track and um, address. And um, it's a good practice when a stage is complete or at the end of the day to m merge back to the main topic branch or to dev. Uh, obviously, when a lot of people are working on a project, there is a, a, the, the chance to have less control over the consistency. So having systems in place uh, to check work and uh, um, keep uh, um, uh, the high quality standards that we want is uh, quite important. 
we clearly divide responsibilities. So each project is assigned to its own lead designer who together with a creative director is responsible for the design direction. So he's responsible to keep everybody uh, involved under the same vision, but also to keep track of the project's development. Uh, The project lead is also the maintainer of the repository in most projects. Uh, In cases uh, of uh, very big uh, projects with a lot of work streams, we uh, sometimes assign a a person to be the maintainer of uh, that. Um, We have uh, very clearly defined project plans uh, and with uh, a number of uh, mandatory design reviews uh, and engineering reviews uh, done by fund developers. Um, this way we get uh, a, an input on the design and uh, by distribution or the engineering and we can benefit uh, from the experience of all the designers and we share the knowledge. If you use a repository manager, uh, there is this issues tab which is very helpful because um, there you can um, flag problems and uh, this can act as an, uh, a to-do list uh, where um, you can also um, discuss on the explanation and link, link to the solution, which is a very good reference uh, for project-specific decisions and um, their solutions. We also use a number of quality assurance tools uh, in the stages. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, uh, Damacheck, which, which is basically an adapted. Uh, uh, we we have adapted Font Bakery to match our requirements and to add some extra checks according to the internal pro- approaches. Uh, Font Bakery is uh, open source and uh, it's a tool that allows you to run a number of checks on your sources. Uh, and by we have adapted, credits go to Nikolaus Wagsweiler from uh, the software development team, of course. Uh, when working in Git, it's uh, quite good to use a repository manager. I've already mentioned that, uh, how some of the tools they provide can help with archiving and uh, uh, with the design process. We use GitLab. And GitLab has a tool that has significantly changed the way we work, which is uh, this continuous integration and continuous deployment tool. Uh, continuous integration is a software development practice where every time that you, when every time uh, that you push your changes to the Git repository, uh, this new code is uh, run through a series of. Um, The new code is run through a series of scripts uh, that uh, they test and validate and build the final product. Basically, what with uh, continuous integration, every time that we push our work to the remote Git, uh, a process wakes up and uh, it runs ufolint on our source code. uh, And that uh, helps us maintain clean files throughout the entire process because if these checks uh, pass, the phones are built. If they fail, we have an error and we can see what went wrong. Uh, The happy side effect uh, of uh, continuous integration is that the specific versions of all the software that to check and build the fonts are stored in the Git repository together with all the design and the engineering sources. So that's a nice little package that you can use at any point in time uh, and the fonts can be built in the exact same way uh, on any machine. This is good because it keeps consistency with the old projects and it allows us uh, to update our software, uh, the software that we use uh, for new projects without being afraid that uh, we'll break something, uh, an older one. Uh, It also allows us to have full control as a company of the tools that we use to build the fonts in ways that font development softwares uh, don't allow us to. And that also means that uh, we get opportunities to experiment and expand uh, the way that we build the fonts uh, by writing scripts to generate, uh, for example, masters or instances or uh, final fonts without manual work by customizing what goes to the tables or even adding a new functionality to the fonts. A nice example is Dark Mode, which is a library project. Uh, Dark Mode is a variable font uh, that has a weight axis and a dark mode axis. And uh, the dark mode axis was built uh, programmatically using only the drawn instances of the weights. The dark mode axis is essentially working as a great axis and it offers an optical adjustment of the outlines when switching between uh, normal and inverse modes. 
Um, I mentioned tags uh, before to mark important stages, but to add to that, we integrated FontMake to automatically um, build the fonts when we tag our commits on a specific way. So if uh, I tag something as a release, it builds the different font formats, uh, like desktop, app, and web, or uh, what's needed, and signs them. And if we uh, tag them as beta, it does the same, but also adds uh, the beta font disclaimer on the version, uh, to the version string. This is uh, quite handy because it obviously uh, makes things consistent and keeps a very good archive. Uh, some issues that it might be worth mentioning uh, for somebody who would want to have this workflow. Uh, when exporting UFOs from the various softwares, um, the, the software might add information uh, that is software related. So if people are working on different apps, that creates conflicts. This is why it's quite uh, important to know your code um, and um, to be able to understand and separate what's uh, software related and what's not, and to only commit the changes that are relevant to your project. Uh, also, uh, a UFO doesn't store smart features that some designers might find handy, so I thought to add that as well here. Uh, making your life easier, that's a last Git tip that uh, can simplify the workflow and possibly make uh, Git more appealing to designers. Um, you can use a graphical user interface. Uh, what does, that does, um, if you're you, basically you can do everything through the command line, uh, but a graphical user interface makes everything easier and faster especially if uh, you're not familiar with the command line environment. So it might feel cool but uh, to use a command line, but uh, using a graphical user interface, for me at least, like uh, really solved and made my life much, much easier. So more specifically, it uh, can allow you to have a preview at a glance or where your branch is in relation to the rest of the repository and see if you need to update or merge uh, your work with something. It uh, allows, uh, it clearly uh, defines uh, uh, it, it has a clearly defined hierarchy and classification uh, in the files in a visual way similar to that of your computer window. And because in type design we change a large number of files on one go, having a visual helps because you can instant, instantly see which UFOs are involved and what uh, files have been changed instead of uh, running through uh, endless lines. Um, you still need to get familiar with the concept that Git uh, and the terms that Git uh, ha uses, but uh, you don't need to remember all the various commands because, you know, it offers buttons, so that's quite easy. Uh, it warns about conflicts and provides easier ways uh, to solve them. Uh, side note, for this uh, um, uh, images, I'm using a screenshot from Fork, which is uh, the app that I prefer for as a graphical user interface, but there are more out there. And finally, my favorite one is um, uh, you can easily stage and commit specific lines of code, which is a great day-to-day -day benefit because you can filter in detail what uh, you want to actually save and commit and what you don't want. Uh, a lot of times, we are if as we design, we move things around, we change uh, colors, we forget or we don't want to, we change our minds. Uh, and uh, working with Git and these visual tools allows us to really be explicit on what we save. So to summarize, um, Git, on a very simple level, Git can help in archive and documentation. A little bit more advanced, it enables collaboration and splitting work very uh, easily. Uh, it, uh, it, for us, it enables, it enables us to collaborate more closely and um, on a more advanced level, it allows us to uh, integrate the tools uh, that we build the fonts uh, along with our sources. So if you've never used Git for type development or you are skeptical about Git's uh, usefulness for the design process, uh, I hope that with this presentation, uh, uh, I've said some light maybe uh, on how Git can be used for the type making workflow. Um, it's nice to share uh, our processes and open up a discussion. So I hope uh, this talk contributes to that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Natalia. We have you with, with us again. Perhaps you have to unmute. 
Sorry, I yes. I removed my headphones because it's weird listening to my voice. Oh yes, yeah, it's it's one of the worst things. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have already quite a few questions. And given that we have a bit more time, I would like to uh, post some of these from the audience. So the first one is, um, thanks for the good presentation about Git. Glyph 3 now has a Git-friendly format that can be edited by several users simultaneously. How does this compare to the UFO-based workflow and would it be worth considering to switch? Um. I haven't used Git Glyph 3, <laughs> but uh, like the first thing is, I mean, it, it depends on, on how you're working and um, how many people, like, I don't know, it depends on uh, the project that you're working on. If you want to work cross-platform, yes, like because Glyphs requires you to work on a bunch of those as well, right? So uh, mm. UFO doesn't have that limitation. Um, so that's the first thing that I could mm. think. So it depends on that. Uh, but uh, if not, I mean, I don't know if it's worth uh, changing, but I guess that's one thing. <laughs> um, like, well, yeah. Well, it seems um, Git is certainly uh, a good way of um, collaboration. No, it's, it's a really powerful tool. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, Git is one thing. Like, I, I guess from what I was presenting in this workflow is that it's also this uh, UFO relation to it, uh, which helps to the collaboration in a way. Um, but yeah, like if everybody's working on glyphs and you can use the same workflow with the Git, basically, but you need to align on which mm. because mm. we we like at Dalton Mark, we people are working in different uh, uh, software as well, yeah. so not everybody is mm -hmm. working on the same one. Sure. So. Okay. So we have a few more. There is, um, while one is working, let's say, on Cyrillic and others uh, on Greek, can you see what is modified in the file up and merging? Um, what do, oh, it's from Boris, right? Hi. <laughs> what do you mean upon merging? Like, you can see what has been modified in the file. You can see what has been modified, like, if I work on Greek and you're working on Cyrillic, uh, when I post my changes when I save my commits. Like you can see exactly what has been modified okay. similarly to the, from the other person. And when we merge, if we have uh, uh, changed the same things, we can, we, yes, you can see uh, mm -hmm. what has been changed. And if we have same, changed the same thing, it will create a conflict, with, which will mean mm -hmm. it will tell you which one do you want to save from the two or Okay, so a follow up on that. How do you solve this conflict? So if you are, especially now that you are not sitting next to each other, mm. do you have a way of quickly communicating and, and solving these conflicts? Uh, we try for them not to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well. So, <laughs> yeah, but because that's the thing that uh, if you are uh, splitting them clearly, like uh, it's, it's kind of unlikely mm. if you know, I mean, we're quite uh, clear on which parts you're working on. Mm -hmm. But if they do, uh, it's it's easy because, like, first of all, one person would merge and then it's easy to communicate. Like, you can see it, um, um, yeah, if we, we have chats, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Did I answer your question? I'm not sure. Uh, mine, yes. I. Okay. <laughs> I hope the, the others do. <laughs> um, okay, another one. Do you also use Git to record design reviews? Uh, we use uh, uh, the tags to, to mark uh, which sources are going to be reviewed. So you can uh, clearly like take them and uh, review them. It depends on how uh, you do the review. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm use it to record them, but it depends on what review that is for uh, engineering reviews. And it depends on the comfort that each person has as well on mm. Gate. The way, I'm not sure what record, how I could uh, explain that. Because if you do reviews, for example, like we, we also print stuff and test stuff differently, right? Mm. So we would uh, upload the reviews, the, the result of the review either on the drive or you mm -hmm. can share on this issues tab that I mentioned. Like we use that in order to point out stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there you can uh, clearly point out on the on the specific file as well or and you can show the solution uh, mm. 
when you solve the issue or whatever, uh, the specific commit as well. So the person who did the review can check mm -hmm. the commit and see if oh, yeah. it, okay. how it has changed. Mm -hmm. So that's also quite oh, useful. Interesting. Okay. So you work um, with this also with external consultants like that with Git? Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> um, right. I haven't thought about it actually, but uh, <laughs> I guess, um, uh, no, with external consultants, we send the file, like we communicate with okay. email and we get right. uh, the reviews that way. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, a few more, because I think we still have a little bit of time. Uh, what uh, GUI do you recommend? Um, I mentioned it on the talk. I recommend Fork. I, I recommend Fork. I like Fork. I use Fork. Okay. I, right. If I'm honest, I haven't really tried another one because when I find something that I like, I kind of stick with it. But I mean, I think there are a few ones. Like I think there's Git Kraken, which has a cool name. Uh, cool. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy with Fork, though. It's right. quite, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And, Do you use an agile work frame? What's an agile work hmm. Okay, that I would need to know now. Uh, who who asked that? Okay, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, well, perhaps um, that person who asked that uh, tags you directly, yeah, in in the veto, um, and then you can you can reply. Yeah. I mean, okay. if it's like Toshi tells me that it's agile is like Scrum, I probably were not using it because I don't know what that is. So I think that's an answer. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, another one, well, which is more kind of, um, uh, well, it's a question about onboarding. So do, do you have uh, an onboarding process um, for new fund developers joining the team? Um, yes, uh, is that in relation to the specific workflow or in general? We do. We like when somebody joins, uh, we we have this training program, uh, which is also like uh, Telmark has also this internship programs, which mm. is basically the mm -hmm. same thing that you do as a training when you uh, when you get as a right. when you're hired as a fund developer as well. Yeah. Where we have uh, at the beginning, I mean. Um, we do some design exercises and calligraphy. Like it, it's a nice uh, program mm. actually. And then we have like the person, everybody works on a project that it's not a client project and you do the whole workflow that we oh, use great. with a, not a client project, like mm -hmm. it's your project. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, I, I, that's pretty nice. It's also nice because uh, at least when we were in the office, it was uh, uh, a nice transition to get and see the, the dynamics and like that to get sure. familiar with the environment. So that was nice. And it's almost two months. So you get to really know right. you, you take part in all the phone developer meetings as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sounds like uh, a great, great thing. So I guess, um, when, when are your offices open again? Do you know, are you still, I guess you're still in home office. We are in home office. Uh, it like, I think now, uh, gradually, uh, we can, start going mm -hmm. from July but like it's not uh, mm. necessary like we right. we can still work from home mm -hmm. as long as we want basically yeah. the office will be open starting maybe September onwards but oh, we okay. don't we're not required to go uh we kind of changed the the uh, the way kind of, of working as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The collaboration, no? I mean, it's, uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot of uh, companies adapted to this new new way, let's say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To be honest, I mean, uh, the um, I think this Git workflow and this Git UFO workflow, um, I didn't realize it as much before <laughs> we started working remotely as mm. well. But uh, <laughs> it, it really... Uh, it was really at, like we adapted, I think, quite at least from my experience, quite fast with mm. the remote working because sure. it's so sp clear and so specific, and the, the work is divided so easily. Yeah. So that was not like like it's it's we were already using that from before, obviously. Right, right. Uh, but yeah. Okay, That's one last question because I <laughs> I wanted um, to um, kind of. Um, 
make make a question about hinting. How how does uh, hinting fit into this whole flow, or into the Git environment? Do you? Um, we uh, so we hint in VTT. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And then we use this command to turn our VTT data in a folder oh, yeah. in the, okay. with the UFOs. Mm -hmm. So we push that, and then um, yeah, it, it, when the forms are right. built, it, it okay. contains a hinting as well. Okay. So you still think um, that hinting is is important as uh, you hint all of your projects? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I should. <laughs> I mean, we do hint other projects, so yeah. it is important, right? I mean, there is, yeah, there is like a well hinted font. Like it's, it's. Sure. I can I mean, see the makes, difference, obviously, but of like, course. yeah. Um, okay, great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay. So, um, well, other questions, please directly in Vito and Natalia. Thank you very much. We'll see you, you later in the panel. Mm -hmm.